The following is an audio drama. An audio drama is an audio-only production with a full cast of characters, sound design, and music. Headphones are encouraged, but not required. To download the full 11-episode series, visit MagusElgar.com. Within the multiverse sits a fantastic magical realm, a place we call Hoth. This is the world of Magus Elgar, seeking to prevent disaster. He and his colleagues hunt for stamps, scientific tools augmented with magical power. The tale continues here, Episode 7, Just Add Drexlor. Once more, we find the determined male men and women traveling across the countryside. After surviving a run-in with a kleptomaniac stomp in Arcademia and purloining a spell to fix their radio, Mail now heads to the town of Glumbledon, seeking a vital ingredient. Just because you're going the same way we are doesn't mean you can gab about us the whole way. Oh, that's fine. This is my stop anyway. Fare thee well, adventurers. <laughs> Please let me slow down. <sighs> Idiot. Good riddance. Well, you could have at least let him stay a while longer. Maybe he could have helped me study this logarithmic spell we got from Quoth. I can't stand that guy, and I'm certainly not playing more I spy with him. He clearly cheats. And it does get very dull when every answer is tree. I'll be happy once this trip's over. You said we needed what again, Doctor? Depressiva concentrate. The Magus said it's an adhesive byproduct of glum. The scroll says it's one of the most important components for the repair spell. Mostel doesn't sell glum byproducts, so we have to head to the source. Nobody refines Glum better than Glumbledon. Oh, this entire ride is such a bore. Uh, can we please just teleport now? Ah, is the Magus not enjoying the scenic route? Of course not! There's nothing but trees to see. The road is too bumpy in shaping my cradle, and I'm pretty sure that horse is making lewd expressions at me. Do not insult horse! He makes more than you do. Oh, tish posh. You could have stopped eating after we realized the first pie didn't come back. I wanted to be sure. By eating 13 <laughs> pies? Yes. Stop yelling at me. <sighs> we agreed before we left that we can't keep teleporting. Not after what happened to Horatio. It was only slight disorientation and incessant babbling over the quality of peanuts. He was complaining about disembodied eyes invading his memories. Oh, they watched me in the bathroom as well. Oh, like there's a difference. TV always taught me that you're not yourself when you're hungry. Hm. I made sandwiches. Ah, finally, something to look forward to. Um, I'll... Pass. Uh, I am not hungry. Oh, don't be such a stick in the mud, Doctor. You've always enjoyed my sandwiches. Enjoyed is a strong word. So, what kind of sandwich did you make? Ooh. Uh, liverwurst? Um, this is a sandwich? Uh, it's uh, uh, something. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Enigma has always aided my digestion. Okay, maybe it looks a little different, but I wanted to use some of the magic I've been practicing in my cooking. Go on, try it. Kaylee, I don't mean to be unenthusiastic, but... <laughs> oh, posh fish! What's the worst that could happen when magic's involved? I'd offer Kake as Exhibit A, but he's back at the tower keeping an eye on the ferro fluid. Hush, Kake! But I'm not... It's sandwich time! Oh. <sighs> what is this? Liverwurst! Or at least that's what it's supposed to be. What spell could you have... <laughs> you try levitating the ingredients, right? Well, of course. I mean, that's one thing I tried, yeah. What possible other magic do you need to sandwich? Well, there was pyromancy to toast the bread, uh, levitation to put it together, summoning to get the meat. Uh, what was that last part? 
Toasting the bread? I think she said summon the meat. Summon the meat? Summon the meat? Summon the meat? Yes! That's what I said. It was working out so well. I said the incantation right and everything. I just don't know where the liverwurst came from. I was aiming for ham, to be honest. Ultrafoss medicine goatee. This could be from any alternate plane of existence. Why, it could be a flank of ulterior minotaur for all you know. If I wasn't stuffed to the seams with pie, I'd complain about starving. So I'll do it for Udo. Good job, Kaylee. You're starving Udo. I'm all right. Look, Kaylee. Look at that scrunched face of hunger pangs. Such a travesty. It's no different from the hot dogs I eat at home. At least try the gelatin I made. No magic in this one. Ooh, what are those particulates frozen inside it? I made sure I grew this one to just the right size. See? Proper jiggle physics. Oh, do you have any idea how cooking works? I try not to think too much about it. <coughs> well, stop. Here we are. But this isn't Glumbledon. I'm not going further. There be goop on road. Well, just run it over. It knows its place. Nope. Not moving any further, Mr. Fancy Robes. Now look here, you... Oh, uh... He's at a loss for words? I take it that doesn't happen very often. Well then, might as well see what all the hubbub is. Now then. Oh. oh my. Doctor, what's wrong? I, I've lost my words as well. Vegas, what's go elements? Ugh, it's everywhere. Oh my word, what happened here? Elements. Kaylee's gelatin consumed the town. Knock it off. It's right here, see? Jiggle, jiggle. It seems the road has been blocked off by this terrible gelatinous mass. Look at it. It's like a lumpy cottage cheese that's jettisoned from a giant nostril. Listen. Hmm. Does that sound familiar to you? Sort of like a boot. A stippity stepping in a cow pie. Oh, stop that. No, it sounds more like slapping a soaked shirt on the ground over and over. <laughs> Udo, what do you think it sounds like? Indigestion. Ding, ding! Udo wins! Here's your prize! Oh, no. Well, we have to get through it somehow. Nope. Orstra's line at Sticky Goop. <laughs> I see your future in adhesives, horse. Do you think it's another stamp? Preposterous! I never had anything like this in my lab. Irrelevant! The important thing is we must acknowledge what has transpired here. You mean aside from the road being gunked up and blocked off? No, I mean the undeniable proof that we should have teleported there. For all you know, we'd just teleport straight into the goo. And then we'd be much closer to the town. Yeah, and possibly choking on it. Choke on your words later, Udo. From the sheen on the horizon, it looks like the town hasn't fared any better. There's magic afoot! And on my foot! Ha 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 ha! Slob, slob, slob! All together now! Slob, 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 slob! I don't hear any singing! Whoa! Oh. Good thing my cloak's treated to resist stains. Oh. Oh, God. My mortal enemy. Cardio. I want to die. I might vomit. And also die. I may die twice. Kaylee, Kaylee, I'm at least 30 years older than you. You must get some more exercise. No, I'm with her. Walking is the pits. It's why I levitate. Ah, look at this place. It's in shambles, and covered in goo. Is the goo climbing up to eat the roofs? How are the townsfolk so calm about this? This is Glumbledon. Everyone has embraced their depressions, hence the sallow expressions. It's their own town motto. And, more importantly, it's a delicacy in the Westlands. You can't get canned melancholy as well preserved as the Glumbledon export. It spreads well on crackers. We'll be able to find your depressiva concentrate here, Doctor. Why would anyone want to live in such a miserable place? 
Dirt cheap rent. Someone thought it was wise to found a town atop a spiritual ley line. Ghosts with unfinished business tend to retain their ether and linger here. But since everyone here has terribly unremarkable lives... I can see why no one's very motivated to help them move on. Wait, I, I thought it was impossible to talk to the dead. Ghost! Clearly ghost right here! My god! <laughs> Proof of an afterlife! Ghost, please, tell me, what do you see beyond this mortal coil? If only I had heeded my wife's warnings! Now I hear her nags for eternity! Ghost, pay attention to me! They can't. The dead ignore the living. Too caught up in their lamentations. Selfish bastards. Enough ghost talk! We must figure out where all this goop is coming from, and- Hey, isn't that the minister over there? Oh, elements, no. The end is nigh, so why waste it lying on a dirt floor? Give yourself a chance at salvation and be the talk of the town! What's he doing? Being trike. <laughs> Minister Trike? What in half are you doing? Ah, Vegas! I see you're not yet gooified. Super. Not all of us have the consistency of your spine, Trike. <laughs> Permission to hoot mockingly, sir. <laughs> Deny! Oh. You'll find everything here is well within my right as a citizen and a minister. My city ministry, if you will. I will not! And what exactly are you doing? My duty! My Elimocenarian philanthropy knows no bounds. Elimomousy. You made that word up! Actually, no, it's right here. <laughs> I'm here to offer the masses my greatest asset absorbent textiles. Practically a giveaway at 100 quibbles apiece. There's no finer domesticating solution for your goo pets. Still working up the trade rights to that name. Have you even made any sales? Of course. Just look at my money piles. Ooh, they're so big. <laughs> <laughs> There's a cream for that. Really? I think he likes the burning sensation. <laughs> See? This is what happens when your income isn't regular. Silence! All of you! Oh, is that happening again? I thought you said them five the cookies were supposed to help you, sir. Oh, that's private business, Scott. They don't need to know that. These textiles are meant to help clean up after my latest craze. Goo pets. Is that why it looks like there's snot everywhere? You were selling this obnoxious secretion as a pet? An old adage of my position, give a man a bucket and he'll clean goo for a day. Give that man a pet made of goo and he'll invest for all of that lifetime. That and the breadbasket rule doesn't apply to amorphous self-replicating pets. <sighs> Only you would benefit from others' misery. Uh, shush! You don't even know what I was gonna say- I said shush! Misery? <laughs> Hardly! People get cute pets and the special carpets to take care of them, and I get their money. Everyone wins! Yeah, well, mostly I win. That's all that matters. All this does is spread the goo around. It doesn't even absorb it. I never said they work. Who knows what works against these blobular things? Now listen here, trike. I don't care for your business acumen. Just stay out of our way while we fix this problem and get our supplies. Well, I can't let you calm these people with your conflagration. So don't ungoop this up for me. Oh, I'll ungoop it up for you. It'll be so ungoop that... Vegas. Not while I'm taunting you. Yes, sir. Uh, please, I'm trying to retort. But the quibbles, sir. It's eating your quibbles. What? Wait, no. No, 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 no. I hadn't even gotten a chance to bathe in it. You were going to bathe with my pay? Gross. I'll give my kids some of that. <laughs> no bath for you. It took the scroll. The... What scroll? The one from Quaff. When did that happen? Was nobody paying attention to me just now? Uh, uh no, no. Nobody no. really pays much attention to wizards. Oh, I am a scientist, you ninny. We should probably help. <sighs> Fine, but only because it has our scroll. 
All right, Minister, we'll call. Where did he go? Vengeance will be mine, Goo. Taste the flames of my fury! Fornasi! Fornasi! Fornakari! Fornakari! Well, he's got the right idea. Time for step one of a ratio scientific method. Analyze the situation and come up with a reasonable solution. After all this time, Udo, no, set it on fire. That's hardly scientific or helpful. We can't risk the scrolls getting set on fire away. Ponasi Polarum. Ponasi. Ponasi. Well, now, this is my kind of methodology. Et tu, Kaylee? I'm not just a scientist, Doctor. I'm a scientist who can shoot lightning from her fingertips. Taste Madame Fouche's vengeance! Parte Fulminis! Oh, this can't end well. Uh, probably not. Oh, God. In the interest of cooperation, would you care to explain how you came by this school? We got it from some masked man. Oh, that was easy. Trike wouldn't be upset that we asked you. Oi, right now, that goop is holding my wages hostage. So, yeah, we got it from a shady merchant over in Academia. Academia? But why would anyone give something like this to Trike? Probably just wanted to give that goo to someone with grubbier hands than himself, I suppose. Wait a moment. God, did you handle any of the goo? Yeah, Trike wouldn't go near the stuff, so I did all the hauling. I had to change me clothes three times, I did. L -l Let me see your hands. Sure. You haven't washed your hands today, by chance, have you? Yeah, to be on hygienic, sir. But no, not recently. I think I know what this is. You do? Back in my days on Earth, a group of students tricked me into believing they caught some sort of fungal infection called cordyceps. It caused them exhaustion a poor attention span, and an addiction to gambling in Las Vegas. I ended up creating a whole vat of antifungal gel before I found out they made it up to avoid my midterm. Poor attention span, gambling and exhaustion? Sounds like the Megas. Are you sure it's not the real thing? No, at least not in our world. What we're dealing with, as much as I hate to admit it, must be a stamp of my Drexler antifungal gel. But how? I disposed of it months ago. It seems, after much personal analysis, that... <laughs> Fire didn't work? <gasps> Blasphemer! How could you just say that? Because it clearly didn't. I know, but it's, it's the way you said it. I went through like five totems. These stupid things keep breaking on me. Kaylee, did you throw out my antifungal gel? No, I kept it because the shark tank kept coming over. The what? I forgot it because I kept inviting my friend Mark Tank over. Uh, K K Kaylee, I'm going to need that lunch you packed. Doctor, this is hardly the time for a snack. On the contrary, it's the perfect time. All right, don't give me a hard time if you start hallucinating. Well, seriously, what else did you put in this thing? Oh, you know, stuff. Perfect, quickly now, we've no time to lose. Let the foos! Pagrava! Furilla haut nous! Oh, elements, I'm tuckered out. How did you tucker me out, Goo? Not supposed to be tuckerable. You win this round, incessant goop. Oof. Well, of course, the moment we cooperate, you're utterly useless. I will say I'm impressed, Trike. You may only know one spell, but you're keeping at it. That must be quite the totem. Uh, uh, yes, I use my lucky coin. I've had it all my life. Seemed, um, only natural. Vegas, you know how to stop the goo. I do too. It's just ticking all day. What if I said I could make it go faster? I'd say shenanigans. Tell me how. All it needs is a little snack. Wait. My gelatin! I was hoping I could get some of that before Here, I- Here, Goop! All you can eat! No! You're feeding it itself. 
that's positively barbaric and grossly fascinating. Wait, the goo is crystallizing. How does that even work? Because of what's inside the gelatin. Yeast. Wait, yeast? Yes. Like for bread? Bread yeast. Why? I thought it would make the gelatin grow bigger. But it just froze into little specks, so... That's not how that works. Well, excuse me. I'm a physicist, not a biologist. Kaylee, crowbar? Crowbar. Ah! All right. It should be here. Ah, yes. The crystal encased the scroll. Pity about your gelatin. But I know there's one cooking lesson you were good at. Kaylee? Udo? Uh, trike? Let's toast this crystal! And how? For see what they said! And that's how we cook it in my kitchen. Aw, again? Stupid totem. Quickly, Doc, before the townsfolk come to their senses and ignore their burning homes, grab the cooter! Shouldn't you help, too? I'm exercising my city ministry by making you do it. So do it! Stop trying to make that a thing! Shouldn't we be doing something about this? We should. Then again, if we save the town too well, they won't have anything to be glum about. Devastating their economy. I think between the goo and the fire, we've done plenty of damage here. I don't mind leaving all the gold stuck in that grossness. Well, I kind of mind. Same here. I mean, it couldn't have hurt the coutons. We could always use it to get the deep perceiva concentrate. I could have really used that if not. Oh, piss off! And so the male team managed to save the town from being devoured by goo by setting it on fire, helping Glumbledon recover its wealth from trike. A pyrrhic victory, if you really think about it, seeing as they have to rebuild from all the fire sending them into depression, which in turn will bring their glum into surplus for possible profit? Hmm. Is this a good thing? I can't tell anymore. Just... just let it go. I did. Oh, but greater ethical mysteries await. What was the masked man planning by giving Trike such a dangerous stamp? Will the male team be able to find the other stamps now that the radio is due to be repaired? Find out next time. Ugh, they missed a spot. In Magus Elgar by Kennedy Phillips, the narrator is Rick Cabral, Kaylee Fawn, Sandra Espinoza, Carriage Driver, Tian Wang, Uda Malaki, Chris Moore, Dr. Gra Horatio, Randy Nazarian, Magus Elgar, William Violenis, Minister Trike, David Ottavino, and Got Iron Ball was played by Brian Stavali. The theme music was created by Hamed Hokumzadeh. Incidental music by Andrew Maz and APM Music. Vocal performance was directed by Andrew Cornell. For a full list of credits, please visit MagusElgar.com. Magus Elgar is a Melody Gun production mucked about for the entertainment of listeners like you.